So what you are seeing now is the Kolar Schist Belt, around 78 kilometers, fully mineralized. We have just have nearly 80 kilometers, 8 kilometers only occupied by Kolar gold fields. In this Kolar gold fields, we have extracted, accounted about 800 tons of gold for which royalty is paid. But unaccounted is about 3,000 tons of gold has been expired from this small patch of 8 kilometers. So there are, that's what I was explaining to many of my, including the ministry co-colleagues, that we can develop nearly 20 BGML mines in this Kolar Schist build alone and producing several, several tons of gold, which has not been attempted. Instead, they close the mine, the only mine available. It's really ridiculous that maybe it's right. In it. So now I think the new ministry should look at it more openly because Supreme Court order is already there. I think uh, they should be able to reopen this mine and make it viable and we'll be able to reduce the amount of uh, uh, foreign import, foreign export, importing of gold. John Warren, he was, uh, uh, he was a soldier in the uh, British East India Company and um, he had uh, given a report in the Asian uh, Journal that uh, there is a possibility of gold. Uh, however, for many, many decades nothing really happened. But once Michael Lavell got the license to mine, there was a frenzy of activity. Many companies came, many companies um, withdrew, some sold their concessions, some that just abandoned it and went away. One company survived and that was John Taylor and Sons. There was something very enclaved and different about KGF because it was uh, a, a, the mining of a precious metal. It happened exclusively by one company called, called John Taylor and Sons and they had pretty much uh, the run of that place. In fact, if you recall in my book, I've called them the company state because I've said the company was pretty much the state in that location at least. They could issue what were called mines out notices to workers or also state out notices to workers, which basically meant that anybody who had committed some kind of uh, misdemeanor 
or any uh, organizational activity which they did not approve of, the company felt free to not only exile them from that particular mine in which they worked, but they could also send them out of the Mysore state. Now that's pretty powerful if you ask me. வருஷம் அப்படின்னாக்கா அங்கே விவசாயம் செய்யறது இடம் வந்து திருவண்ணாமலை மாவட்டத்தை சேர்ந்த ஊர் பெரும்பாக்கம் என்ற ஊர் அங்கே விவசாயம் செய்யும்போது அவரால் அந்த கூலி வேலை செய்கிறதுக்கோ அல்லது குடியானவர்களுக்கு அமைத்தில் அடிமை வேலை செய்ய முடியாமல் அவர் வாலிய பருவத்திலே தன்னுடைய தகவலாரோடு இந்த ஊருக்கு வந்தவர் எங்கள் தா எங்கள் அப்பா very nice very comfortable in the mines my um, great grandfather father and my dad were all underground men my father was an underground engineer he also served in the reme during the second world war and um, when he came back he was made a covenanted officer so we had all the perks and facilities offered to officials in the john taylor uh, company there's uh, actually a very marked preference for labor from tamil nadu in all parts of karnataka not just in kgf uh, this was true of kgf in particular because of its location which is just at the border of three states that is mysore andhra pradesh then also in madras presidency and the tamil speaking regions and since most of the uh, employment was undertaken by contractors their links were with north arcot and stalem which were also dry regions and where people were looking for seasonal employment naan pond engineer department enga machine kettitukuda and machine repair pannanum yen kuda avan petru na accident na payi ke ella thookinu yerno ஸ்டூல்ஸ் எல்லாம் போட்டு பேக் தூக்கினா ஏணியில் ஏறணும் கேஜ் நம்மளுக்கு கொடுக்கலாம் ஏணியில் ஓடணும் ஏணியில் ஏறணும் ரெடி நான் ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி ஐம்பதுல வேலைக்கு போனேன் அங்கே போகும்போது என்ன வேலை பிறந்த வேலைன்னா ஒன்று பிளாஸ்ட் ஆகக்கூடிய கோல்டு மண்ணு இருக்க பூமியில் அதை வாரக்கூடிய வண்டி அதாவது மண்ணு வாரக்கூடிய தொழிலே தான் போனேன் முதல்ல அதுலேயே தான் நிரந்தரமாக ஒரு இருபத்தஞ்சி வருஷம் நான் இருந்தேன் அதில் சர்வீஸ் பண்ணேன் பாறைக்குள்ள படந்து செல்லும் பசு நிறுத்தங்கோ 
அதை பக்குவம் பிழந்தெடுக்கும் பாட்டாளி சிங்கம் குறையில்ல கோபுரம் பாதால அரங்கம் கொடிய அணு குண்டு போல வெடிக்கும் சுரங்கம் மயமாய் உயிரை மாய்க்கும் கனி வேலை என்றண்ணா மார்பில் ரத்தமும் வடிய நித்தம் உழைத்திடும் அண்ணா அந்த அமாவாசை நான் நினைக்கிறேன் ஒரு பத்து அமாவாசை கூடனா என்ன இருக்கும் நூறு அடி கேட்குது இதுக்கே நூறு அடிக்க இந்த தான் வெளிச்சம் இந்த சூரியடி வெளிச்சம்னா இந்த ஒரு நூறு அடி தான் தெரிஞ்சது எங்களுக்கு வெளிச்சம்னா கார்பெட் லாம்பு கார்பெட் கல்லில் அந்த தண்ணி ஊற்றினோட அந்த கண்ணு மேலே தண்ணி ஊற்றா பொங்க பொங்குது பொங்கினா அது புகை வருது அந்த புகை வருது அது கார்பெட் லாம்பு ஒன்று விடுமா அந்த லாம்பு தான் நாங்கள் ஒரு ஒருத்தர் மைனிங் கார்டு கொடுப்பாங்க லாம் இப்போ லாம்பு நாங்களே வாங்கணும் பணம் கொடுத்து வாங்கணும்னு வச்சுக்கா அதை வாங்கி அதில் தான் எரியும் சரி எங்க அப்பா காலத்துல என்னன்னாக்க கேள்வி என் காலத்துல கார்பெட் கல்லு எங்க அப்பா காலத்துல கேர்பெட் கேள்வி வந்து ஒரு கேள்வி ஒரு பிரச்சனை ஒரு வாரத்துக்கு நாலு கேள்வி கொடுப்போம் நாலு ஒரு வாரத்துக்கு இப்ப நீ கெவிக்கு எடுத்துட்டு போனோம் அந்த கேள்வி கொளுத்தணும் அங்க எங்க அப்படி பத்து வருஷம் வச்சுட்டு இது எல்லாம் வேலை செய்யணும் அந்த வெளிச்சம் உங்களுக்கு தான் எழுத்தது இதே வெளி பிளாஸ் பண்ணணும் வெடி வைக்கணும் மண்ணை வாடணும் அந்த கேள்வி அமைச்சுக்குமே எடுத்துட்டு வந்துடணும் an occupational hazard which is quite unique which uh, occurred whenever it was that they hit a spot which was weak and therefore itself worst or where uh, those who were drilling would drill into a gelatin filled socket by mistake and that would explode in addition to those who were killed as a consequence of this rock burst there would be several who died simply because they ran helter skelter and fell in the darkness down another sink or a shaft so it was very very dangerous and risky to work underground until you had built up that kind of sense of the pit அது எப்படின்னாக்கா இப்ப நான் வேலைக்கு போய் சேர்ந்த உடனே எங்களுடைய குடும்பத்தில் எல்லாரும் எங்க அப்பா எங்க காலம் ஆயிட்டாரு நாற்பத்தி ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி ஐம்பத்தி நாலுல அப்போ எங்க அம்மா எங்க கூட தங்காச்சிங்கெல்லாம் இருந்தாங்க அப்புறம் மேரேஜ் ஆகல அவங்களுக்கெல்லாம் எங்க கூட பிறந்த ஆறு பேர் தங்காச்சிங்க அதில் ஆறு பேருக்கு மேரேஜ் ஆகாதனால அன்னைக்கு என்ன செய்வேன்னா நான் வாய்ந்த சம்பளம் தான் அவங்களுக்கு கொடுங்கோம் அதில் என்னன்னாக்கா நானே இந்த ஓட்டி அதிகமாக செய்வேன் அது இன்சென்டிவ் இன்சென்டிவ் சொன்னா அங்கே கெஞ்சில் இருந்து மண்ணை வர்றது போய் வர்றது நான் மண்ணு வாங்கினே இருப்பேன் அதனால எனக்கு டபுள் டபுள் சம்பளம் வரும் அப்படின்னு சொன்னால் மற்ற தொழிலாளி இப்போ ஓட்டியோ இன்சென்டிவ் போனஸ் இல்லாத தொழிலாளியெல்லாம் ஒரு குறைஞ்சபட்சம் ஒரு ஐம்பது ரூபா மாதத்துக்கு வாங்குறான்னு வச்சுக்க அப்பத்துக்கு ஐம்பதாவது வருஷம் நான் குறைஞ்சபட்சம் நூற்றி ஐம்பது ரூபா வாங்குவேன் என்னுடைய காங்கி என்னுடைய குரு நான் செய்யக்கூடிய குறிப்பு ஏன்னா நாங்கள் பேர் பால் மாற மாட்டோம் வா வீட்டில் போய் என்ன செய்ய போகணும் இங்கே மட்டும் விட்டு வாங்கி தருப்போம் அதனால் கொஞ்சம் அதிகமாக பணம் கிடைக்கும் போது எங்களுடைய குடும்பத்தை நான் மெயின்டைன் பண்ண முடிஞ்சுது என்னுடைய அப்பா காலமான பின்னால் அந்த பொட்ட பிள்ளைங்கள்லாம் கல்யாணம் பண்ணேன் எங்கள் பிரதர் ஒருத்தனும் அவனுக்கு மேரேஜ் பண்ணேன் அது இல்லாமல் பெங்களூரில் போய்ட்டு ஒரு இடம் தான் வாங்கினேன் அந்த நேரத்தில் நான் ஏன்னா அந்த நேரத்துக்கு நான் அந்த மாதிரி இந்த இன்சென்டிவ் போனஸு என்னை ரொம்ப காப்பாற்றுச்சு in spite of the fact that uh, workers were exposed to very high levels of mining dust which led to this incidence of this disease called silicosis or miners thysis as it is called there was refusal on the part of the company to accept that this is an occupational disease so there was a great refusal to accept that they required the kind of protection 
that uh, Workers' Compensation Act would give. Plus, there were large numbers of accidents. Now, if you look at the accident records, the blame for accidents was again mostly placed on individual workers and their carelessness. Our lives in KGF were basically uh, influenced more by British culture than by uh, the Indian culture. So everything was centralized. Uh, the company looked after the employees very well because our houses were sub, uh, given free and uh, electricity and water were also free. Hospital was subsidized. Uh, everything was, even the rations were subsidized. And every year, every mine had uh, their own Christmas and um, New Year parties, New Year celebrations. So uh, KGF was a very jolly place to live in. If you have a weed, you can get a weed. If you have a weed, you can get a weed. If you have a weed, you can get a weed. If you have a weed, you can get a weed. If you have a weed, you can get a weed. If you have a weed, you can get a weed. If you have a weed, you அப்படிதா <laughs> We had a school for the Anglo Indian separate and for the European children separate. They were called uh, the special school for the Europeans, not they wouldn't mix with us. Uh, earlier days, as I told you, when the white men were here, we had a wonderful, wonderful uh, kitchen. Every Saturday, every Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, five days in the week, we used to have a dance, a band playing. And we used to go. Whichever day, whichever day we feel happy to go, we used to go. In Mysore, we did not have the application of the uh, Trade Union Act. Even though it was passed in British India in 1926, we eventually got a Trade Union Act only in 1942. And that's a long period after the British India Act. May Day procession was like a, like a, a red festival in, uh, in the mining area and they would come towards the Anderson Bet area also. A huge procession of people uh, carrying a cycle plus walking. Then women leading it with flags, singing revolutionary songs and, and uh, uh, them in that red shirt and uh, uh, all red shirts, red pants. So it, like it used to give us a real thrill at uh, procession. Summer or Yeroti are Korike demands Mala and the seventy seven days Migapiria strike nineteen forty six. The March, April, and the Kalakat Mother Nala Naraku. Other Nadan the Pere management and the Pora Tataka Tangamudiata. Even sanitation workers and the Kupal Rung, Kaval Rung, Lala Mudan Nathra. Nathi in the Talavering Levanda and the clean Panapudi Valley area of Sutum Panapudi Valley, say Armikum, the complete Banda mindset. And the Tolaling would be a demand scenario, the seventy seven days strike, twenty six to twenty nine demands. That's the maximum demands on the management accept Panigra. Accept Panita Purgin now the Naka and the Sengodi Tochen, the Red Flag Trade Union on the Migapiri or a strong union now the Tolaling Lukon, the Tochanga Malay, Talur Malay, Migapiri and Ambikawa. 1930 strike is very interesting because it actually connects all these local forces 
to the force of the state. It emerged around the uh, desire of John Taylor and Sons to actually take the thumb impressions of each and every worker in order to begin to maintain a record for their minds of who is working in which mine. Because what usually frequently happened was that somebody working in Mysore mines uh, would be, for instance, uh, mined out and then he would be taken on by a, a contractor in Nandidurk mines or in Urgaon. And it was very hard for the company to trace someone who had been mined out in another mine or even given a state out coming back. There were all kinds of ways, subterfuges by which workers actually in, ensured that they stayed employed. So in order to check that, and also to check those who will therefore be eligible for workmen's compensation, which was by this time already implemented, they needed a paka record and what better record than the thumb impression. But when they began to record the thumb, thumb imprints, workers began to get extremely agitated for a reason which I have deduced bore some similarity to their bondage to the money lenders. Because until then, the only person who had requested them to give, who had required them to give their identity in this form was the money lenders. In 1946, the independence struggle coincidence, coincide out. Upper the British, the Mysore State, the Divan, the Angle, the Purkumudia, where the opposite union in our Kranglo, Silapere Kaikuling Lala said, either Talamatanga Kudim, where we am going, then was and the Madriana leaders in Lavand, the number Illa the Sengin. I've been 1946, November 3rd, November 4th, upon the Comrade K. Swasana on the policy at the plan Pandra. Plan Pani Anglala Pani Katila Putumo, our Kudan and the assistant and the or a Tangi or a Kapati or the Adalana Bria, Comrade K. Swasan Kaila and the Katikut Airport. Either Tanji Toila Linga, Yerkanawe in the Talerum Rodia Talamela, Mikapere Pora to Mani, Namavetri and Jerkoro, in the Suchi and Teridong, Yari the Pandrango, management, Yari Kaikuling Levici, the Panakuri, Visheta Tanji. Underground level Kodiya, the iron gun that the toilet lining, the belly, the protest for our own. Because period, poor atom mother, very cum mother. That is another level. That one, mother color, ma, where mother is, I suppose, all of them opposite. Panra. I mean, management, no, they take colleague. Management, order, they said. Apo, panna mother, because period, color, our mother, our situation, our mother, apo, police car, no, that, our firing is start, panna, our Malayali ground, the agile, Maidana, Nenar, that. Anga one nasa in the Kukuri, Iron Gankana, Toila Langamadilla, firing arm which on Kitakita or Toila Linga Yella or Yeratina Yeratan Joyce Toila Ling Toda Kanan Ramaya Chinnapan Kaliapan Subramani Ramasami in the Ara Ilan Toila Lang Lavanda and the Tupaki Prayatilla Baliara. Mines, by definition, are wasting assets. There is a fixed mineral resource, and at some point in history, it is going to come to an end. There is not much that you can do about it because that resource takes millions of years to actually build up. So it's not as if John Taylor and Sons were not aware of the fact that it was a wasting resource. They were very aware of it. One would even say that the moment when they actually give up the mines to the Indian state is when they know pretty much that the mines have been exhausted. So by the time the Indian state takes over these mines, it's already reached a stage of very low productivity. Uh, so the narrative that workers may produce of, uh, you know, Indian government and Indian officials and Indian engineers not being so interested in exploration etc. is a slightly misleading one and it of course comes out of their own hope and expectation, it comes out of their own misery I would say because they would not like after two or three generations of their families have been miners to have no work to look forward to at all. 
there are nearly 80 kilometers of vertical shafts, cumulative, and nearly 1,400 kilometers of tunnels already done and into the ore body. That means ore body is just available. And the potential of this mine will be too good because now even one gram or two grams per ton is economical. There are of course many things that could have been done. Uh, for example, you could have developed uh, processes for uh, extracting the little bit of gold that exists in the cyanide dumps. That would not have been a labor intensive industry, so it would have not employed very large numbers, maybe maximum 1500 or so. But even that was not tried with any degree of seriousness. So there is some element of truth as well in the accusation that the Indian state has not shown the same kind of interest in its development. Like any public sector unit, it has also declined for reasons of its own weight. By giving a chance to reopen this mine with a favorable order by the government of India, which has already got the direction from the Supreme Court, there is nothing that they need to really look anywhere else. Just hand it over to the employees to reopen the mines and look out and help us to initiate and reopen many other gold mines in the country. That will be a great thing because the gold technologists are in KGF. The metallurgists, the geologists, the explorers and the miners are in KGF. So they should be actually encouraged here and then they should start exploiting other locations all over India. So sad to see that those workers are uh, being denied their, uh, they're getting fooled by these cooperators, the management of the, of the, the current uh, in charge management of the BGML, the political class, the leaders. So the people who are really affected are those, those families and those uh, people who were on the rolls at that time, who were hopeful of something coming up for them some, and even their wants were not in some lakhs or crows or anything it was just a little more than what they I mean they were just asking for a little more than what was being offered but even now they are getting full so I feel very sad for them <laughs> Most of us who left the mines, majority of us settled in Robertson Pet. And it was known as an Anglo-Indian colony. We had only Anglo-Indians living here. And then we would, uh, in fact, we met, we met each other only by living in the Anglo-Indian. Like most, my sister also married a boy from here and we all lived in the colony. Most of the people, the Anglo-Indians have all retired now. And the youngsters are all going out. They have no scope here, there's no, I mean, job-wise, no, most of our children are all gone out. Everybody's gone away, there's nothing left in KGF, absolutely nothing. So what keeps you in KGF? <sighs> Memories. Okay. Memories. If you do, can I say these few words with a smile? If you ever go to Ireland, will you take this message for me? To a sweet old Irish lady. Gold mines for them for the world, huh? ஒரு பம்பளிக்கு மூர்த்தி கிடையாது ஒரு மூர்த்தி அப்போ என்ன சவரன் அறுபது ரூபா ஒரு சவரன் ஒரு சவரனுக்கே ஒரு மூர்த்தி இல்லைன்னா இது என்ன கோல்டு மைன்ஸில் நாங்கள் வேலை செய்யுது மலையை துணைக்கு வந்து மிஷினை மார்பில் தாங்கி மிஷின் 
மலையை துணைக்கும் எந்திரமே சிலை மார்பில் தாங்கே நெறிந்த உடல் நனைந்த வேறை அணைதிலே ஏங்கே நெறிந்த உடல் நனைந்த வேறை அணைதிலே ஏங்கே எட்டடி தட்டி வீட்டில் மனுவிலே வியாசம் எட்டடி தட்டி குடிசை வீட்டிலே வாசம் இதை எண்ணி எண்ணி ஏங்குதையா உழைப்பவர் கூட்டம் இதை எண்ணி எண்ணி ஏங்குதையா உழைப்பவர் கூட்டம் மாயமாய் உயிரை மாய்க்கும் வெளி வேற என்றென்னா மார்பில் ரத்தம் வடி எண்ணித்தும் உழைத்திடும் அண்ணா படந்து செல்லும் பசு நிறுத்தங்கும் பிழந்தெடுக்கும் பாட்டாளி சிங்கம் கொடிய அணு குண்டு போல வெடிக்கும் சுரங்கும் மயமாய் உயிரை மாய்க்கும் கனி வேலை என்றண்ணா மார்பில் ரத்தமும் வடிய நித்தம் உழைத்திடும் அண்ணா